Hello, we are team 22091. My name is Victor. I am Ian. I'm Paul. I'm Mark. As society realizes the environmental effects of industrialization, cost-effective fuel is important now more than ever. And due to its wide range of applications, the demand for cleaner burning diesel fuel is high. This is because cleaner burning diesel reduces adverse health, environmental, and operational effects. Now, when we refer to cleaner burning, what do we mean exactly? Well, we're talking about the sulfur content. Removing as much sulfur as possible is key to burning clean. The objective of this project is to design a hydro desulfurization unit to produce diesel at the ultra low sulfur level. The unit must process 30,000 barrels per stream day of a blended straight oil and gas oil and life cycle oil feed stream while meeting the current ASTM standard specification for diesel fuel oils. The diesel fuel product's max sulfur content must be less than 0.005 weight percent. The criteria we considered the most important were process efficiency, sustainability, and safety. And more specifically, finding the most efficient catalyst for sulfur removal, minimizing energy usage and process cost, and also maximizing recycling of hydrogen. Moreover, the process is designed to meet the constraints such as EPA regulations, safety criteria, and OSHA standards while performing hazard analysis as part of risk management to mitigate the probability of incidents. At the simplest level, the process has hydrogen reacting with our oil feed stream at high temperature and pressure to then produce desulfurized diesel fuel with hydrogen sulfide as a byproduct. A conventional hydro desulfurization unit was chosen as the basis of design due to its tried and true simplicity. Unique to this design, however, was the addition of energy saving and cost cutting equipment to recycle two main components needed for sulfur extraction, hydrogen and diethanol amine. This is the overall process with all pieces of equipment. It consists of three main sections, the reactor, separation, and amine regeneration. Here's the actual process simulation model in Aspen Plus, the software used to size and optimize all the streams and equipment. Now we'll get into equipment design and optimization. The reactor has been designed as a fixed bed reactor using an air plug model in Aspen Plus, with a focus on the two reactions for hydrogenolysis and hydrogenation. Each converts the sulfur contained in dibenzodiophene DBT into hydrogen sulfide while consuming hydrogen. In this figure, we have the kinetic parameters that we rearranged to introduce them in Aspen. Then the sensitivity analysis to optimize the catalyst load is performed to minimize the DBT and maximize H2S. A multivariable sensitivity analysis is performed to maximize reaction selectivity and conversion while optimizing the number of tubes, length and diameter, but also making sure that the reactor volume and the fluid velocity is reasonable. After selecting the most optimized configurations, we plotted them with the same diameter and different number of tubes and catalyst load. The column has been designed using the rigorous RADFRAC model in Aspen. Multiple sensitivity analyses were performed to determine the best feed stage and number of stages to minimize the molar compositions of DBT and H2S in the bottom's output. The column ended up with 10 trays, a 1.5 reflux ratio, and a stage 5 feed stage. With this setup, the column is producing a diesel fuel product satisfying the 0.005 weight percent of sulfur. We designed the gas separator as a flash bezel with a throttling valve at the input stream that causes a large drop in pressure and part of the fluid vaporizes. We optimize operating conditions of the equipment to minimize hydrogen sulfide, DBT, and hydrogen molar fact fractions at the liquid output of the gas separator. The waste gas leaving the reactor is mostly hydrogen sulfide. This byproduct, known as sour gas, must be dealt with as it is harmful. To treat the sour gas, an absorption column was added to the process. The column, also known as an amine contactor, uses an amine solution to react with the gas and absorb all of the sulfur components. The sour gas leaving the reactor gets fed into the amine contactor and separation takes place. Exiting from the amine contactor is a purge stream and recycled hydrogen gas stream. The column is vertically oriented and made of a chromium alloy. Optimization analysis were made to calculate the number of stages, operating conditions, and amine selection. To emphasize sustainability, the sulfur-rich amine solution will go through a connected amine recycling system so that the rich amine becomes lean amine again. This is an extensive process using a distillation column, among other pieces of equipment. The rich amine leaving the contactor is pressurized, heated, 
and then sent to the distillation tower where sulfur compounds are removed and the linamine is sent back to the contactor to be reused. The byproduct of this column is sulfur gas, which is easily turned into sulfuric acid. This will be sent to uh, Lithium Nevada, a lithium mining company reliant on sulfuric acid. With the heat exchanger network, we performed a pinch analysis, which is a way to determine the point in the process where the energy consumption is minimized. And using the results from the graph, we were able to design our heat exchanger network. The minimum utility requirements for the exchangers were determined and the exchanger network shows the optimal usage of the hot and cold streams for heat recovery. Then we simulated the exchangers using the rigorous heat X model in Aspen, and we found out that 16.9 megawatts of heat were able to be exchanged. And the exchanger design and rating were done using the TEMA sheet to comply with the heat exchanger construction standards. The safety and the environmental impact of our process is another priority of our project. For safety, we performed a HAZOP analysis for each of our main pieces of equipment to manage the associated risks and listed out solutions for possible accidents or system failures. A life cycle assessment was also performed for the main pieces of equipment to examine the environmental factors of our process. And we focused on making sure that the output feeds were either recycled back to the system or sent to a unit for treatment to keep the process sustainable. Pumps are sized using heuristics that approximate the head based on pipe length, elevation change, and the presence of a control valve. Head was then used to calculate the horsepower and size factor of the pumps. Finally, this is used to determine the cost of the pump and motor. This table displays the head, horsepower, and costs for each of the four pumps in $2020. In the end, we have successfully designed and optimized an HDS unit capable of producing an ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel product while meeting all our project constraints and regulations. After performing an economic analysis, the gross annual earnings were estimated to be $380 million based on annual product sales and production cost. Over the course of the project, the team learned the importance of spending group time together to identify, observe, and mitigate risk. We learned that when designing a large-scale unit process, every byproduct must be accounted for. And lastly, we learned that applying engineering thinking is crucial to calculating and understanding simulation results. We would like to thank the University of Arizona Chemical and Environmental Engineering Department and our mentors, Dr. Adriana Brush and Melissa Young. And thank you for watching our video presentation for Design Day 2022.